I want to dig deeper into this because you know how important those guidelines are as cities, states, and individuals figure out how to safely reopen. Joining us now to discuss, Dr. Kelly Hennick. She's an epidemiologist who has partnered with New York State to lead the contact tracing program. Doctor, you trained with the CDC. You know how important their work is. Is Peter Navarro's criticism valid? I think we have to remember that the CDC is one of the best public health organizations in the world and certainly has been the leader in the United States for decades and decades. There are virologists, laboratorians, epidemiologists, really the best of the best at CDC. And I would say that CDC is absolutely doing its best to support the response in, in the United States under these circumstances. So their guidelines, we should trust them, correct? That's right, their guidelines have been put out. They've put out an, a great deal of really solid material that's available on their website and is highly valued, not just in the US, but by public health professionals around the world. We did get some positive news on a vaccine from Moderna, which is a smaller laboratory, just this morning. They said a small human trial showed that people developed antibodies in really high numbers. Where are we in terms of a vaccine? And are you optimistic that we could see something by the end of the year? The Moderna announcement was very, um, very a very positive uh, move forward. So in the in the Moderna announcement, they talked about uh, the antibody response in a in a phase one, which is an early study in humans. It showed positive antibodies. Uh, what we need to look at is safety. So far, this vaccine looks to be quite safe. Uh, and then we have to move on to uh, further studies in more in more humans to see what those responses look like and to optimize the dosing. Uh, but it, it is looking positive. But Steph, I would have I have to uh, stick with our, our, our earlier discussions about vaccine in that it's going to take months to get to a point where manufacture and distribute distribution of an effective vaccine is is ready. Well, let's talk about numbers and big picture. Because if you go back two weeks, we had roughly 30 states open for business. Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel told the New York Times this, quote, the data is always two or three weeks old. If the data is two or three weeks old and we opened two weeks ago, if there was a spike in cases from the reopening, would we have seen it by now or will it take longer? Most people are saying we should really be cautious and think about a three week window. But we're getting there, we're getting there, and we're, we're not seeing uh, enormous spikes yet. But we aren't seeing declines either. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about Georgia, which was an early opening state, for example. And although the cases haven't seemed to spike there, despite their mid-April opening, they're still seeing six, 700 cases a day. So we really have to track this data carefully because they, those numbers could increase at any point. It's not a, a straight line, if you will. That said, you've got spikes in some places like Texas, North Dakota, and Alabama. How can you tell whether it's a spike in cases, people are getting sicker and it's spreading faster, or it's increased testing? If you test more people, you're likely to find more positives. That just makes sense. What we, we, we like to track is the positivity rate, how many positive cases over the total number of cases that are tested and if we're really testing a broad swath of the of the population, we expect that uh, positivity rate to be in the less than 10% range. So that's one of the, the indicators that we look at to see how broadly is testing really occurring across the population. And I, I want to be careful. I am in no way asking you to get political, but I'd like you to fact check something for us. I want to play for you an interview that President Trump's son, Eric Trump, did from his home this weekend with a TV anchor on Fox News who was interviewing him from her home. Please take a look. The Democrats are trying to milk this for everything they can, and it's sad. They'll milk it every single day between now and November 3rd. And guess what? After November 3rd, coronavirus will magically all of a sudden go away and disappear, and everybody will be able to reopen. Doctor? I wish coronavirus would magically disappear. I think the data is very clear that um, we're even seeing now in some of our most carefully orchestrated responses like South Korea and Singapore, that when these um, social distancing measures are relaxed, that we start to see more cases and larger outbreaks. So I think our, our guard has to be up. We have to be cautious and we have to watch the data very carefully. 
Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. We always get smarter when you're here.